So in the last week or two, we've seen two very important things happen in AI world. One is we saw OpenAI's Sora. It's what you're seeing on the screen right now. You type in a prompt and it creates stunning, very lifelike, realistic looking video or animated video or whatever style of video that you want. This is uh, kind of reverberating through society. Hollywood is noticing, other AI companies are noticing. At the same time, Google drops its image generation model, the Gemini model. There's a lot of outrage. People are pointing out problems with the image generation side. People are pointing out with the actual text generation side. Now, we're not gonna be unpacking that again, but I think the question in a lot of people's minds is, well, what's the alternative? If you have these large AI models, they're very effective, but maybe they conflict with your worldview or perhaps maybe you disagree with something that the company is doing. Do you even have a choice? Can you opt out? Or maybe you're a writer or an artist and the content that you're trying to produce is, is a little bit more in the gray area, like 50 shades of gray area. And ChatGPT and Dali straight up refuse to create any salacious stories for your entertainment, much less provide images to go with it. Well, the answer to that and more is open source. In general, it's software for which the original code, the source code, the thing that makes it run, is made freely available. You can download it and do whatever you want with it. With that, let's get started. So this is Imad Mostak, CEO of Stability AI. Stability AI is one of the bigger open source projects in kind of the AI space. Forbes did this little hit piece on him. I'm not sure why, that was kind of weird. So it's kind of hard to tell what's true, what's not nowadays, I guess. But I think he explained some of the misunderstandings or concerns that Forbes brought up. And now he's just grinding and building and moving Stability AI forward. So quick note, I don't know as much about the open source AI, probably not as much as I should. I've been focused a lot more on open AI, on the stuff that Google's doing, but I think that was a mistake. I plan to dive much deeper into this whole thing. So Andrew Ang, another big name in the AI space, saying that I know this week has been tough to Google. There's been a lot of criticism about Gemini's gaffes. And he's saying, I know everyone means well. Which, truth be told, I mean, the same thing was happening to OpenAI back in the days. Here's somebody in December of 2022, you know, upset that OpenAI expressly prohibits arguments for fossil fuels and Sam Altman saying that, you know, it's unintended. It requires more research to solve. Right, and the comments here are basically, you know, Sam is lying and narrator, it was completely intended and this technology will lose its value if it's restricted to anyone's ideologies. But the point is, these things will happen if you need to generate images and have full control over what is and is not allowed. Stable Diffusion is probably right now one of the leading technologies for that. It's open sourced. It can be free if you're running it locally in your computer. Recently, the founder is saying that he's going to have Stable Video 2, so similar to Sora. But he's saying they will need more dollars to kind of compete with the bigger companies. Where it gets pretty exciting is Stable Diffusion 3. So this has been announced. It's slowly being rolled out and they're opening up the waitlist to early previews. So that's the link if you want to sign up for the waitlist. I'll leave it in the description. And here are kind of the range of images that it's producing. It has been very good with text so far, and it's been steadily improving the quality, the realism, etc. I mean, I guess these are looking pretty good. These are very detailed. What is this? Powdered sugar mountain bananas with climbers. That's pretty good. And here they're describing the prompts like a cinematic photo of a red apple on a table in a classroom. On a blackboard are the words go big or go home written in chalk. Which, I mean, this is excellent. And that's exactly what was described in the prompt. Here's another image. So they're saying in the corner, right, the words stable diffusion. They're nailed that. Next to the pig is a robin bird wearing a top hat. I mean, this is excellent. I mean, the shadows, everything else looks good. Close up of a chameleon over a black background terrific. I mean, this is very impressive. So three transparent glass bottles. That's perfect. On, on a wooden table. Nailed it. The one on the left has a red liquid and the number one. Notice the light kind of diffusion here with the red. The one in the middle has a blue liquid and the number two. The one on the right has a green liquid and the number three. Uh, this is excellent. Resting on the kitchen table is an embroidered cloth with the text, good night, and an embroidered baby tiger. Then there's a lit candle. The lighting is dim and dramatic. I mean, the amount of things that they can put in there. Usually in the past, I've tried doing just sort of one object because if you put too much, then it gets weird. It gets, it kind of sometimes go, goes off the rails. It doesn't really follow the prompt. There's almost like three prompts that are described here and it kind of nails each and one of them, each and every one of them. So this is terrific. So we'll take a look at Stability AI 3 when that comes out. 
one thing that I'm super excited about is upscaling. So this is upscaling. This is an old Lara Croft from like the 90s. And here's what that looks like upscaled. So this is kind of direct competition to Magnifique or Magnific, however you want to pronounce that. So Magnific.ai. My apologies for that. That was Jeffrey Bezos. I was trying to upscale that image. But I really like how Magnific upscales things. So this is, for example, taking an image out of mid-journey and applying it here. And you're able to actually say kind of what things you want to focus on, change various aspects of this. Here's sort of another one, but you can see it definitely upscales it, makes it much more defined. Here's kind of a semi-blurry image and kind of as we go across it, this really brings out uh, a lot of the, like, the shapes and the details and stuff like that. And again, you can customize it to make sure that it's doing the things that you want it to do. You know, here's another great example. So see how blurry this is. If we go across it, it gets so much more defined and shiny, etc. Here's a blurry image from Pal World. And as you go across it, notice how like all the different shapes, how much more clear they get, the shadows, the details, everything in the background. It changes this person completely <laughs> for some reason, but um, everything else is, is, is great. Here's another good example. So see these sort of blurry goggles as you go across it. I mean, that is pretty spectacular, I gotta say. Doesn't always work too well. Here's Sylvanas from World of Warcraft, and here's the upscaled version. So they, they made some creative decisions there. I'm not sure. So I'm not sure if that's the same character, really. I mean, I, they took the red glowing eyes and replaced it with mascara. But I mean, as you can see, like the, the background, everything else is much more detailed. I mean, I think here's another great example. So it's kind of blurry to just crystal clear and so sharp. And it keeps a lot of the like all the details and everything that it's supposed to be, I feel like it, it keeps it very close to what it's supposed to be. Here's a shot from the GTA, the new GTA video game. So as you can see here, it like really upscales and makes everything super sharp, super detailed. It does change details, who the people are, etc. Here's Abraham Lincoln. So we do once and it's a little bit sharper and then we run it through again. And here's that. And I got to say, I mean, this, this is much sharper. But depending on how creative you let it get and kind of what, what settings you put in, it, it can be quite drastic. So here's again, Lara Croft from Magnific, and we change that to this. And then again, we can take this and upscale it further. So we can take that image and upscale it even further into something like this. Now, at some point it gets a little bit weird because it looks like it adds tons of freckles and whatnot, but you can modify the prompts and change various settings. So for example, here's, I think a much better one. Here's an old, old picture that's upscaled with Magnific. Notice like a face appears here. It does some funky stuff every once in a while. But the reason I bring that up is because it looks like Stable Diffusion will have this as part of their open source AI image generator. So as you can see here, it upscales what was this poorly restored image done by like a professional. And, and so this is how Stable Diffusion reimagines it. Here's of course, Lara Croft. So again, their take on it which I gotta say, this is much more closer to the original image. If you notice, they're looking kind of in the same direction. They're facing the same direction. The backgrounds are very similar. All the gear on the belt and stuff like that looks like it makes sense what she's wearing. And now it looks like there's much more things that you can do. You can search and replace various things in the images. We can do editing, doing in painting. So like if we wanted to change this hat to something else or jacket or whatever, right? We can change it to a jacket, change that to mountains. Then we have creative upscaling up to 4K and it looks like a stable video. So here we can change that to sushi, change this guy to a raccoon, change this to a glass, etc. So that's stability AI, stable diffusion. We'll be looking at that more and more over the upcoming months because I think that it's very exciting what they're doing and it gives you a lot more control over what you can create. How much more control? Well, at the end of this, I will show you how to get it to generate whatever you want. I can't even show you what it generates. Uh, I'll just show you how you could go about doing that. But if I show you some of the stuff it makes, this video will be taken down off of YouTube for sure. But why is open source software important? One of the reasons is because you can build on top of it. Here's Dash Tune Studio that allows you to create your own comic books your own storyline, your own consistent characters, put those in a comic book format and have that whole storyline be put together into a comic book format. It's very easy. It's very straightforward. It took me about five minutes. You can select whatever style you want and whatever characters you want. You can add your own text or have, you know, whatever chat GPT gener generated for you. And basically this allows you to very quickly, very rapidly create your own stories, your own comic books. In the future where I think this is going to get really interesting is with something like Sora or Stable Diffusion Video, 
you might be able to use this to create something like storyboards and then translate those storyboards, just put those into the video generation and have basically movies created since it will be sort of animating these storylines. I think it will be pretty straightforward to translate this into video format. So that's Dash Tune Studio. Let's take a quick look at how it works. All right, so I didn't record the first part of this. So the first question was, are you a writer, artist, or developer? So I clicked developer because maybe we'd get more, more stuff to play with. We'll see. How do you want to use, how do you want to use Dash Tune Studio? Comics, I guess. How did I hear about it? X. They don't even say Twitter anymore. All right, write your story. So write your story. Let's start here. A fit female anthropomorphic cat lands on Ringworld to try to sabotage it. Let's see if that if that does anything. All right, so it breaks it up into panels. The first panel is a sleek spacecraft defense. Let me make this bigger. So panel one, a sleek spacecraft descends onto the exotic landscape of Ringworld. It's a verdant forest stretching into the horizon. Them saying horizon is a bit of a red flag. So Ringworld is imagine a sun and at a distance of, you know, however far the earth is away from the sun, let's say you have this ring that stretches all the way around. I think this was first described in Larry Niven's Ringworld. I mean, the idea is probably earlier than that. I mean, the Dyson sphere is the same idea, but with it a sphere completely enclosed, basically capturing all the energy of the sun. But a sci-fi book called Ringworld sort of described it as this band and potentially having these shadow squares to simulate the day and night cycle. But if you're standing on it, I mean, can you imagine what that would look like if you were standing on its surface? I mean, this is kind of how that's normally imagined, but the scale would be massive, like the entire earth would fit somewhere here. So they continue, the craft's door hisses open and Sienna, a fit anthropomorphic cat with high-tech gadgets, steps out, ready for action. So far, it looks great. All right, so we start with sort of selecting a style, Let's do a cyberpunk anime and a witch on a broom and a cat is the loading screen. And so here you can create various characters as, or rather various avatars for different characters. These are all the presets, but I believe we can create our own, but okay, let's just select something. There's nothing that looks like a robot though, but okay, whatever. All right, so it created the cartoon. So this is the first frame. So there's a sleek spacecraft descending, exotic landscapes, etc. No writing on that one. Here's our cat character, so it's got cat ears just in case. You weren't sure if it's a cat character or not. This is it. The core is just ahead. Time to end this. So this is a view from a cliff edge overlooking the core of Ringworld, a vast pulsating technological marvel. So, I mean, it's not really animating Ringworld, but, or, you know, drawing it correctly, but that honestly doesn't really matter. I am kind of impressed. I mean, I figured out that it's a kind of a sci-fi theme. So, I mean, I'm, I'm liking this so far. It's not exact, but not bad. Then a robotic guard whoops around with a weapon. It's got the weapon and it says, halt intruder. Sorry, no, no time to chat. The administrator says, do you understand what you're doing? Sabotaging this will doom thousands of planets. And so Sienna's like, what do you mean? I was told Ringworld was a weapon. So here the prompt is the administrator explains the situation. So here they didn't write anything out, but that, that would be it. Then they work together to improve it. And then she says, sometimes the truth is the greatest adventure of all. And she's kind of got this parting shot. So, so that's the entire comic. So I've created that in, I mean, just a few minutes, maybe three minutes with all of the waiting and generation. And while there are issues, just my kind of top level perspective on how well it works is it's, it's good. It's interesting because now we can start adding, changing things up. But most importantly, I mean, this character changes three times throughout the story. Let's see if we can create a consistent character. All right, so first of all, let me see if I can create a new character. All right, so I'm going to scroll through mid-journey. Let's grab this guy right here. That's perfect. We'll call him Cat. And so then we generate, so what casting role, the age, ethnicity, hairstyle, hair color, brown tabby. So let me just go ahead and uh, use what they've suggested. All right, so we're going to add a new frame. So if you use Photoshop, I got to say everything's pretty easy. It's, it's very similar. A lot of the keyboard shortcuts. So it is intuitive, I got to say. So it looks like our cat. Oh, so it's going to take five hours to train on that. Whoops, I didn't realize that's so time consuming. All right, so let's create a couple different images for this one. Let's create three different ones. And so the prompt that they gave us is Sienna, female, adult, blonde, ombre, standing on the threshold of her spacecraft looks back at Ringworld with a satisfied smile. It's night. And we can sort of say the expression smirking. Why not? 
All right, and let's generate a few. So it's going to give us a couple different variations of this shot that we can put in. All right, so it says it, it's completed. Oh, I see. And so in here, you can kind of go through them and see which one works better. So for example, if you like this one, you can go ahead and apply that one. What's interesting is we have some kind of Photoshop-y things like brush, eraser. We can remove the background, mask, magic erase, and we can upscale. And then there are tons of things that we can do with brightness, contrast, etc. So it's got a lot of things that you can mess around with to create the look that you're going for. But how do you add the talking, the dialogue boxes? Oh, it's page tools, speech bubbles. Okay, so speech bubble. Okay, so speech bubble, and you just kind of click on it, and you type in the text, it is done. And then you can change that from like narration to thoughts, etc. So you can say it is done, and then like move that over there, or at the bottom, they're like it is done. This is probably the only appropriate time to use the Comic Sans font, and it's and it's not here, All right? And then you can, so you can change the size and everything else, color, and then you click optimize text and apply. So I'm not sure what optimize does. Maybe it just kind of makes it less pixelated, but it's like vector graphics, maybe vectorizes it something. I have no idea, but it's looking good. And for example, if I wanted to add a frame, so I go here and I add the character. So for example, let's say I wanted to have our main character, Sienna. Let's have two images generated. And so we just described her, like what, what position she's in. Let's do up close on face. And let's say bloody nose. I mean, if you're doing comic books, they have to give you some room to do certain things that maybe other models won't generate. Otherwise, it's kind of pointless. I might off camera push it a little bit to see what it will and won't do, you know, for science. All right, so generate these two images. So for example, this one's pretty good. Let's apply that one. I mean, it's not a bloody nose, but okay. I mean, it does look like you're able to add your own kind of coloring to it. It sounds like you can just download it if you want to plop it over into like Photoshop or something and work on it there. You can do that. Just download the image, work on it, and then upload it back in here. You have a reference library where you can kind of see all the various characters that you've created, the history, as well as downloaded, uploaded images. So you can create consistent characters. Still having a little bit of a hard time figuring out how to do captions other than like selecting another caption, then going to page tools, right? And then they can add like a speech bubble. And then you click on the page. So I guess I guess that's how you do it, but it's a little bit confusing. But okay. So we can say it begins and kind of put that right there and make the text bigger or red or whatever. All right. This is good. This is very, very good. Generation is excellent. The fact that you can upload your own images to it and create whatever you want is phenomenal. So I mean, the only thing I have yet to test is the whole thing about consistent characters. As you can see here, like this person while similar, I mean, this is not the same person in all of these, obviously. But I can pull something like this in from Midjourney, which I think Midjourney did an excellent job here. This whole pointing effect, this sort of like foreground background can be sometimes very difficult to achieve. So this was like everything about this was just generated really well. So, so if I wanted to, I can just upload that in here. And so here's that frame, for example, right? That can be the start of the story. All right, so there's like the whole story kind of basically written out. And then we're able to publish it on the Dashtune mobile app and basically publish this whole thing. We're not going to do that now. And so here's kind of how that comic book looks, kind of how it unfolds with the storyline. And, and until the very end, it is done. So this is somebody else's. One thing that I'm noticing here is they do manage to keep the characters very consistent, including, you know, eyes, haircut, clothing, et cetera, et cetera. It's consistent from scene to scene. So definitely, I mean, that was one of the biggest sort of stumbling blocks. If they're able to do something like this, that means that you can actually create comic books that with consistent characters, right? So you don't have to like redraw every scene. The character will be generated in every scene, however you want them to be. So like, if you look at this frame right here, I mean, this looks like a typical frame in a comic book where they are trying to like demonstrate something. So obviously these are supposed to be, you know, currency, dollar bills, whatever. I mean, I know exactly what it's trying to portray, what I'm looking at. And so it continues, continues, and then it like all gets dark. I'm not really following the storyline. He's an apothecary now. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening. But the point is, I know who this story is about. This is the same character kind of in various realms with various clothing. But whatever is happening, the point is it, it's it's consistent. And then it ends. But my point is, if you have a story to tell, and you just need the the graphics, the ability to quickly create these storyboards. This seems pretty good for that. So it looks like they do censor some of the generations. 
but it looks like whatever model they're using it, it does render them and then the censorship is added. By the way, if you need uncensored AI image generation, that can be found under unstability.ai. And then you do have a number of free generations that you can use. Uh, so you don't have to sign up for a paid plan. You can start for free, but obviously approach this with caution, right? Because this is like the off the rails thing. So if you wanted to try out Stable Diffusion, they have a number of models here, image, video, audio, 3D, language. And so you're able to download it on either GitHub or Hugging Face. So there's a number of different ways to run it. We'll be looking at how to do all of that in some of our next videos because the open source models are getting better and better. And definitely seems like they're keeping pace up with the kind of closed models. Not only that, but the more and more the big companies censor some of the results from the AI models, the more and more useful these things will be. I hope you enjoyed that. Before you go, here's a comic book with the dialogue written entirely by me and images produced in Midjourney. It goes like this. Silly rabbit. Tricks are for kids. My name is Wes Roth, and thank you for watching.